Hey folks, in this video, I'll be reviewing the 2021 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro chip. Now, in case you're new, my name is Peter and on this channel, I share strategies and workflows for being more productive, for being happier and for living more consciously. You might ask yourself, what does any of that have to do with a laptop? Obviously, a laptop can make you more productive, but honestly, this MacBook Pro is so much more than that. It is a beautiful object to be appreciated. I enjoy using it every single day. It's simply a delight to work with. I'll be touching on what I consider to be the most relevant features of this new MacBook Pro that I find relevant when deciding whether to buy a new laptop and I'll be addressing those in turn. Now, I got the one terabyte storage model, the one with the M1 Pro and I believe the 10 CPU cores. I wanted that because I do a good amount of video editing and I wanted that to be nice and snappy and also because I wanted to have plenty of space for temporarily storing some video files. I use external drives, but it's nice to know that the built-in drive has one terabyte of space because hey, 4K video files are huge, man. Anyway, let's dive right in. So the screen on the MacBook Pro reminds me a lot of the screen of my iPhone 13 Pro. It has 120 hertz refresh rate and it has all the same, you know, depth and color, etc, etc. It's just that the 120 hertz is definitely nice. Like I notice animations are quite smooth. If I move my mouse over the desktop, it's very smooth. You know, if I'm switching between desktops and everything, it all looks much more fluid than it did on some of my older uh, laptops or for example, my girlfriend's 2020 13 inch MacBook Pro. Um, but I don't notice the high refresh rate as much as I do on my iPhone. The screen is amazingly beautiful. It's also big, so it's 14 inches. Um, and that extra screen space is really handy. I find it very helpful, especially when I'm doing something like video editing. Now, the real thing to notice is the colors. They're absolutely amazing. I say this as someone who is colorblind. I have either Protonopia or Protonomaly. I can never remember. This MacBook has a fantastic screen. I mean, you really cannot complain about it. Next up is battery life, and it is fantastic. The cores are so efficient, the CPU cores and the GPU cores and everything, so efficient inside this laptop. The battery is so good that you can really work all day with this thing without even having to plug it in. Like I was doing video editing for hours and hours. I still have plenty of charge left. The other day I started off with 25% battery life. I plugged it in for maybe half an hour or whatever. And it was like most of the way full. Totally, totally great battery life and much better than on previous MacBook Pros. It also comes with this 96 watt charger. So the charging brick is quite a bit bigger um, than on the previous MacBook Pro that I used to own, which is totally fine. It doesn't bother me at all. And it has this nice you know, MagSafe. We'll talk about that more in a little bit. A nice cable um, and it charges really fast through the MagSafe port on the side. With this laptop, I feel totally comfortable leaving the house without my charger. There are a couple things to think about when using battery life. So I'm using Safari right here. Um, as my browser. And so I, I have used Firefox. That's normally what I use, for example, on my iMac. And um, I did notice that Firefox drained way more battery than Safari. And from what I understand, Chrome and other Chromium based browsers use even more battery life, whereas Safari is just really, really optimized. And I checked that myself sort of in the um, activity monitor. I find it really helpful to see that Safari just uses very, very, very little energy. And so if you've maybe read or heard other reviewers say that the battery life wasn't so amazing, ask them whether they were using maybe Chrome or other Chromium based browsers um, and how that changes if they switch to using Safari. So what about the design and the build quality of this 14 inch MacBook Pro? The design is a taste, of course. I absolutely love the design. It's a bit more retro, maybe like the Apple laptop that I had like 11 years ago or something like that. Kind of feels more like it's going in that direction. A little bit boxier also, if you kind of look at it from the side, um, but that's totally fine. Like it's a bit less rounded, but I kind of like it. it's retro. Um, the build quality is of course amazing, like exactly what you're used to from Apple laptops. You know, if you close the hinge and then you open it back up, you don't need to hold the bottom. You know, it will just normally do that um, with you just holding the top. It's calibrated just right, that hinge. I just love that. The trackpad is amazingly precise. Even for video editing, you can get really precise with the cuts. It's a huge trackpad, of course, like you're used to from Apple these days. Um, this is, there's just nothing to complain about. The design is amazing and the build quality is fantastic as well. So that brings me to the keyboard and to touch ID because this laptop doesn't have face ID, but it does have touch ID. So I can just put my finger right here and it works, you know, with touch ID, the same thing it did on sort of older iPhones or maybe on your external Mac keyboard or something. I don't know what you're used to. Um, it's fantastic. I love it. It's so convenient to have that. I guess in older Macs, 
uh, older MacBook Pros, it was built into the touch bar, but we don't have the touch bar anymore, which we'll get to in a second. It's super convenient. I use it for unlocking the machine. I use it for opening my password manager, for unlocking encrypted Apple Notes, um, for making payments. It's extremely convenient and it definitely saves me time, but more so it just makes the whole process of using the laptop feel more joyful and smooth. The keyboard itself, Apple went away from its, uh, what was it? The butterfly switches or something. Now it's just scissor switches. Hey, the keys feel great, comfortable, good travel, a really satisfying sound. Let me just type a little bit so you guys can hear the sound a little bit. Oh my God, the sound of this keyboard is just so pleasant. I love it, it's fantastic. So like I said, the touch bar is gone and I say good riddance. I never liked that thing. I found it very inconvenient. My girlfriend has it on her 13 inch MacBook Pro from 2020. And if I just wanna lower the volume a little bit or like change the screen brightness or whatever, it's just such a pain in the ass to actually do that. Whereas here, I've got all those keys readily accessible, the function keys, start and stop playback, <laughs> all the things that you want to do with your laptop, easily accessible in the function keys. And I think it's a big improvement that they got rid of that touch bar. So what about the speed of this thing? That is a big selling point of these newly redesigned MacBook Pros, right? I can just say the speed is fantastic. I went for the M1 Pro option and I don't regret that at all. And you can get one that's even faster with the M1 Max chips. Um, it is so incredibly fast, even if I'm rendering 4K footage and stacking 4K footage on top of 4K footage in Apple's Final Cut Pro video editing app. It's just super, super fast. I mean, this thing exports way faster than my iMac, which is also not like, I spec'd up the iMac a little bit, but I purchased it um, a few years ago. And this thing is so much faster. I, I really haven't tested exactly what the benchmark scores are, whatever. You can go find that out for yourself if you want to. But let me just tell you, this thing is fast. You will not complain about the speed at all. And it should yet last you quite a few years just because it's so far ahead of the curve of how fast it needs to be. How about the weight? How about the weight of this laptop? So it's a tad heavier than say my old 13 inch MacBook Pro or my girlfriend's 13 inch MacBook Pro, but only a tad, it's still normal laptop weight. And yeah, of course, sort of, I've got my iPad, I've got my iPad over here. You know, my iPad Pro, yeah, it weighs a little bit less, although with the external keyboard on it, the iPad Pro does weigh, uh, you know, more than just the iPad itself does. Um, but it's really, it's not that noticeable. You know, I pop it in my bag and I take it out of my bag if I go work somewhere and whatever, and like, it's no problem. Um, so don't get hung up on the fact that it weighs a little bit more. It's more than compensated by the fact that the battery life is amazing. And I think that's a very worthwhile trade-off. Now, what about the sound that comes out of this thing? If I'm on YouTube or something and I wanna play a little sound, how good is the quality of that sound? So far, it's been perfectly fine. And a lot of people have said that it's really amazing, but honestly, like I don't really listen to music with my laptop like that. You know, if I wanted really good sound, I would just get my headphones and put those on. And fortunately, there is a three and a half millimeter jack right on the side um, that I can plug those headphones in very easily. Um, so I don't really need my laptop to have amazing sound, but it's nice to know that, you know, you can play a YouTube video or play some music and put it, you know, sort of on the kitchen counter next to where you're cooking or chopping your veggies or whatever, and you're gonna get perfectly nice uh, sound out of it. What about the flip side of audio? Not the sound output, but the sound input. How are the built-in microphones? Now, Apple claims that there is a studio quality three mic array inside this thing. So why don't we do a little test? I'm currently using the Elgato Wave 3 microphone right here to record this. Let's switch it up to the sound from the built-in studio array and let's see how that sounds to you. This is me recording with the so-called three mic studio quality microphone array in the MacBook Pro. So compare this sound to how I sound in the other parts of the video where I'm using the Elgato Wave 3 microphone and make your own decision about what you'll like better. So I think that quality is totally fine for being on Zoom or on FaceTime or whatever, or many, many purposes. But you know, if you're gonna be doing something like podcasting or creating videos like this, you'll want to get an external microphone like this Elgato Wave 3 right here, or like this Shure MV7 that I've got right over here, um, which I use, for example, when I record my podcasts. Now, what about the built-in webcam. Okay, Apple made a deal out of this finally being a 1080p webcam and not a 720p webcam, even though they should have made that change in their MacBooks like five years ago. Anyway, it's nice that it's here. You know, right now I have a very good lighting setup. And so that helps then the quality is good. But when you're in low light, 
Um, the webcam is just, it's just okay. You know, yeah, it's better than it was before and it will totally do for FaceTiming and Zooming and everything like that, um, but it's just okay. Let's just compare this shot that I took earlier today in a cafe with the webcam in the MacBook Pro and compare that with my iPhone's selfie camera. I can definitely tell a difference and it makes me wonder why this camera isn't at least as good as my iPhone 13 Pro selfie camera. But hey, can't complain about too much. If you really want good video, you want to get an external webcam anyway, or you want to record it with a mirrorless camera or a DSLR camera, you know, like the one that I'm using right now, the Sony A6400. Now, what about the ports on this laptop? Because one of the things that people have been talking about is that it has a bunch of dedicated ports again for various things. And let me tell you, I absolutely frigging love it. I edit quite a few videos now, so having a dedicated SD card reader is so useful. I don't have to use a dongle. I don't have to use a different machine to get the files onto that machine and then airdrop them over or send them over in some other way. I can just put the SD card right in my MacBook um, from the camera and it really speeds up my video editing workflow. I also like to watch Formula One on my TV and I stream that with the F1 TV app from my laptop and that I want to then watch the races on my TV. So it's great that there's now a dedicated HDMI port that I can just plug into. And then there's the three USB-C ports, which I love because most devices that I buy now come with a USB-C cable on one end at least. Um, and the ones that don't, most of the other ones, I can actually just buy a different cable that ends in USB-C rather than having to like get all these dongles or whatever. Um, and for the few devices that remain that are USB-A that I cannot plug directly into this laptop, I have this Apple dongle. It's very easy. I can put in USB-A here. It also has an HDMI uh, port and that one I don't need to use anymore right now. Anyway, it has USB-C on this side and I can just plug it in right there. So super useful. Um, I really don't miss the lack of a USB-A port at all, but if that's important to you, there are so many dongles and hubs you can buy. I mean, no big deal. Now there is also a three and a half millimeter jack, really handy for these headphones that I sometimes use. So I can plug those right in there, <laughs> really convenient for when you're say um, on a Zoom call or whatever, and you want to not have that echo. I don't need to go find a three and a half millimeter to USB-C or whatever converter or dongle. Um, and of course there's the MagSafe charging. So this thing, the end of the charger, you know, it plugs right in here. Uh, like that and it snaps, boom. Um, MagSafe charging is back, it's amazing. I am pretty clumsy, like I am that guy who will trip over the cable. So to me, this is a potentially laptop saving, not innovation, because the Apple laptops used to have this for a long time, um, but come back and you know, it really may save my laptop one day because I would so trip over that. So should you get one, look, it may sound like I'm a serious Apple fanboy right here, and I really do love Apple products, but objectively speaking, this laptop is just so, so good. Comparing it to my girlfriend's 13-inch MacBook Pro from just a year ago, from 2020, it's hard to think that you'll go wrong if you're in the market for a new MacBook Pro with this thing. The better screen by itself would be a reason for me to upgrade. The better battery life by itself would be a reason for me to upgrade, as would the availability of the ports just by themselves, but it has all of those things and more. And the massive speed increase to me, I mean, that's just a bonus. So the only question is, are all these great features worth the price? Obviously, I cannot decide that for you. For me, it's completely worth it. If I had bought a MacBook Air, my video editing would have been a lot harder. Like getting a MacBook Pro really helps with that because this thing is just so blazing fast. I'm so embedded in the Apple ecosystem that, you know, getting a non-Apple device, that's just a non-starter, right? There are apps that I rely on, such as Things 3, for example, that I use every day. And, you know, the Apple Photos, so many things that I use that I don't want to give up. For me, the only question was, you know, should I buy this thing at all? Because I also have the iPad Pro that I work with quite a lot, but I just found that there are important work tasks that I can do on this thing that I cannot do on the iPad Pro, like editing videos, but also things like updating my website or sending out newsletters. It's just very hard to do on the iPad and those are high value tasks for me. So for you, you have to decide that for yourself, but I will say that the value for money on this thing is very, very good. The only thing is, do you want to spend that absolute amount of money? So I'll leave that one up to you. Now I've got a question for you that I'd like you to answer in the comments. And that is how many Apple devices do you own and are you currently actively using? I'm on four. I'm a little embarrassed that it's four. I feel like I should be using fewer, but I want to hear the answer from you. Uh, aside from that, thanks so much for watching. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe. Let me know if you want me to do more review videos because it's a bit of a different type of video than I've done before. And have a great, great rest of your day.